There were no fireworks or flags waved in January of 1955 when the B-3 went into production. It was just another continuation of this line of organs. The first stores, if you want to call them that, actually they were, they were like factory studios. There was one in Chicago and uh, one in New York and one in Los Angeles. The one here in Chicago, they would sell organs by appointment. And this is 4200 West Diversity in Chicago. This, as you can see, is a stage and they would bring an organ in here and have someone demonstrate it actually. The way they manufactured the Hammond, they made everything at the plant. They coiled their own wires. I mean, you just don't build stuff like that today. Heavy gauge plastic notes, long fulcrum adjustable by mechanics, everything spinning, the oil, all those little fine wires that they had to wire. B3, man, was hand built. I mean, the wood was hand sprayed and hands. And, and the cats would come in at three shifts. And then one guy would wire it this way, another guy would wire it. That's why the wire is shorter, longer. That's why you get, you can find a B3 and they all sound different. They could never remake that today. There, there would be no manufacturing company today that would invest in what it would take to probably make the B3 the way they originally made it. Now, they knew that the average person couldn't afford a $30 clock. So how are they going to afford an organ that costs many times that? The game plan was, was to forget individuals and build an organ for churches. So that churches could have a cost-effective uh, musical instrument as compared to a pipe organ. It doesn't sound like a pipe organ. However, it was close enough. It could do enough pipe voicing, so it certainly was an adequate substitution in most cases. Mm -hmm. 